And of course we can talk about blimps. Here's a picture of one of the famous Goodyear blimps that often makes appearances at sporting events, so everybody has seen these. But blimps float for the same reason that anything else floats. They float because of the buoyant force, because of Archimedes' principle. It displaces air and it weighs less than the air it displaces. Blimps are filled with helium typically. They used to be filled with hydrogen, but the Hindenburg disaster put an end to that. So they're typically filled with helium because helium is safer. Blimps go back historically all the way to the early 1900s. Here's a picture from World War II, a U.S. Navy blimp. Blimps didn't see a whole lot of action in World War II, although they did in World War I. They were actually used in World War I for bombing. Bombs were dropped on enemy targets in World War I in Europe. Here's a early World War I era British blimp. And these things were really, really big. Some of them could carry up to two fighter aircraft inside the belly of the blimp that could launch from the blimp and then go and make attacks, either attacks on other planes or attacks on ground targets. The, um, the blimp could not recover the planes like an aircraft carrier could or can. The planes would have to land on the ground, but they could be launched from the blimp. Here's another picture of a World War I era blimp, and you get an idea of how large these things are. And again, this gives you how much uh, gives you an idea of how much the air actually weighs. The blimp can support not only its own weight, and there's usually a metal frame inside the blimp, but also everything that the blimp carries, whether that's the, um, the motors and the fuel and the people, the propulsion equipment, or as well as any weapons, bombs in this case. All of that weight is supported by the buoyant force, and that buoyant force is the weight of the air displaced. So it gives you an idea of how much air actually weighs. And here's a picture of what was probably the most famous blimp, the Hindenburg. This blimp was built by the Germans. You see the, the Schwachtika on the tail fins there, the symbol of Nazi Germany. It, um, it made uh, several transatlantic flights. It would carry passengers between Germany and America. And it, um, it burned up in its second year of service. It was um, filled with hydrogen, which is very, very flammable. Hydrogen was a decent choice for, for filling the blimp because hydrogen is very buoyant. It's um, even lighter than helium. But it's dangerous because it was flammable. And people were aware that hydrogen was dangerous for that reason. And they preferred to fill the blimps with helium. But because of tensions that were starting to develop between Germany and the rest of the world, Germany was under economic sanctions from other countries and couldn't get any helium. But they were able to produce some hydrogen themselves, so they were filling their blimps with hydrogen. And they had a long track record of good safety with their blimps. And so people were pretty well convinced, just from flight after flight with no accidents, that they had mastered um, the, the storage and transportation of hydrogen without any, without any problems. But then disaster struck in 1937, when the blimp was coming into land at New Jersey. And this was the second year of the blimp's service in the transatlantic flights, but it was the first flight that year. And so it was attracting a lot of attention, and there were several uh, people on the ground filming and radioing, um, covering the event from a news standpoint. And there's some spectacular footage of the blimp bursting into flames right as it came up to the device, the tower that it would attach onto, um, something happened, and it's still not completely known what exactly caused the disaster, but the hydrogen caught fire and burned up, and in less than a minute, the entire blimp was destroyed very, very fast. Hydrogen is so flammable that it was just a matter of seconds before the entire blimp was engulfed in flames. And the, the, the footage is really gripping. And Herb Morrison, the commentator, his words recording the disaster have become famous because of that. And, and when you see the, the video of the Hindenburg burning, you can hear the emotion in his voice as he watches what's unfolding before his eyes. And the, the phrase, oh, the humanity, is the phrase that, that caught on and is still remembered from that incident. And, when, and it's, that phrase is still around in the culture today. And when you hear someone referring to a disaster, people getting hurt or injured or killed in some kind of disaster, and they say that phrase, oh, the humanity, they're referring back to this incident. The Hindenburg disaster marked the end of blimps being used for air travel. 
after that, obviously, people were very skeptical about their safety. And at the same time, um, Pan American Airlines was just starting to have passenger service across the Atlantic in airplanes that could make the trip much, much faster. So blimps are no longer used for passenger service. And this particular incident marked the end of an era.